are uh, a little bit about what the Gospels are, but what are the Gospels? What are they meant to be? What, do they, what did the writers intend to do? Did they intend them to be histories? Did they tend them, uh, did they, was it just a report of the legends and the myths that have been uh, 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 circulating about this, this uh, guy over in, in this faraway, dusty corner of the Roman Empire? What are they? Are they well-intentioned fictions uh, created by his well-intentioned followers. Uh, in, order to do, in order to know the answer to that, we've got to study the Gospels as uh, 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 each of the Gospels itself distinct and separated from the other Gospel writers. There is no, uh, there is no evidence uh, historical or bibliographical, that any of the gospel, our four gospel writers, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, knew each other, that they were acquainted with each other. There's no evidence that they were acquainted each, with each other. There is evidence that Matthew and Luke, as we will see uh, uh, in subsequent uh, classes, that Matthew and Luke had a copy of Mark's gospel. Of course, Mark was written first, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But, but, but no, they did not know each other. Now, let's talk about the dates when the gospels were written. Jesus died around the year 30 CE, maybe as late as 33, maybe as early as 29, but Jesus died around 30 CE. The gospels were written between 35 and 65 years after the events that they narrate. The earliest one, which was Mark's gospel, was written around the year 65 CE. And Matthew and Luke were written approximately the same time, uh, sometime between, sometime in the early 80s. And, of course, John was written between 90 and 95. Some people, when I was in seminary, some people were positing that John was written much later, as late as, a, as 120, uh, which, of course, would mean that John himself, even if there was a, even if the, the sobriquet John referred to the beloved disciple, um, he would have been an extremely old man by by that time. So, uh, so there you go. But there is a significant time gap between the death of Jesus and death and resurrection of Jesus and the very first gospel written. So, what happens in the meantime? Well, a lot happens in the meantime. 35 years is a long time. To write, for someone writing today, it would be like writing about the presidency of Ronald Reagan for the first time. And with no other, uh, with no other documentation to back it up. You just hear stories about Ronald Reagan. You, you listen to CNN or, or, or to C-SPAN or whatever, and you hear people talk about Ronald Reagan, this great president that we had 35 years ago. And you, so you decide to write stories about Ronald Reagan. What are those stories going to look like? Mind you, there are now now there are there are no there are no foundational documents for you to refer to. All you've got is the stories that you've heard. Verbal, Verbal oral, the oral tradition, right? Uh, Margaret or Margaret Thatcher. These 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 three, Ronald Reagan, Mar Margaret Thatcher, and Mikhail Gorbachev, are, were about the same time. So imagine writing about one of these world leaders with nothing but what you've heard people talk about. That's what it would be like to be Mark, to, talk, to start writing about Jesus. 65 years ago was Dwight Eisenhower, the Vietnam War, the Warsaw Pact. Those were things that were going on 65 years. Imagine trying to describe the Warsaw Pact in a, in a, a writing without any history books. All you've got is, is what people around you are saying. 
That's what it was like for the gospel writers to write about Jesus. Back then, what was the lifespan, average lifespan? Was 35 to 40 years? Well, uh, depending on where you were, the the psalmist uh, says... uh, says three score and ten uh, or or in great health maybe eighty you know the psalmist talks about that so so ancient 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 people would be seventy or eighty if you lived to like thirty or thirty five you had a chance of, of living to uh, to your sixties or seventies a, a longer time uh, remember what we said while the, the, in another class we said we said that uh, People approached religion for for protection in this life, <laughs> not for protection in the next life, because they didn't believe in the next life. But what they lived on the edge, yeah. and people, especially in rural areas, the uh, lifespan was much much shorter. Uh, I suppose if you were wealthy and could afford physicians and things like that, you could you could live longer. If the physicians didn't kill you, if the physicians didn't bleed you to death or something, okay. All right. So, what's happening in the Roman Empire in these in this in this time frame? One thing that was happening was that Christianity was beginning to spread throughout the empire. It began with eleven disciples and a few women. Now, no, eleven apostles and 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 a few women and other disciples. We read today today in the in the gospel lesson we talk about. 70 people that Jesus sent out. One would assume that these are 70 of Jesus' disciples, the people who had gathered around him to, to listen to him and, and learn about God and, and began to believe. But for all intents and purposes, the church was 11 disciples and some women. And by the end of the first century, Christianity had spread to all major urban areas around the Mediterranean. Well, that... Uh, uh, that's pretty good, especially in a time when there was no mass communication. There were no uh, national newspapers. There were no newspapers of any kind. How did Christianity spread then? It had to spread by word of mouth, by the disciples telling others who told others, who told others, who told others. So probably the people that you heard the gospel from were not original disciples. In fact, after about a year, very few of the new Christians heard about it from the disciples. Some guy from Ephesus is a businessman, and he comes into my town, and he tells me about the stories about Jesus. And I think well, this is this is something to believe. This is something to to point me in the right direction. So I go home and I tell my wife about Jesus, and I tell her the stories that he's told me, and she goes next door and she tells the neighbors about Jesus. One of the neighbors is a uh, a traveler, a, 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 you know, deals in spices, and he goes to another town, and he starts to tell, and he becomes a believer, and he starts to tell people about Jesus. And the people in the other town begin to tell their children about Jesus. Now, who did they get the stories from? Well, they got the stories from their parents. Well, where'd they get it? They got it from the guy who was a, a, a spice merchant. Well, where'd he get it? He got it from his wife. And where'd she get it? She got it from my wife. And where'd she get it? She got it from me. Where'd I get it? I got it from the guy from Ephesus. So all of these these children who are becoming believers in Jesus have no connection to Jesus other than the stories that they have been told. You have uh, you've you've all played the the game operator. You know, you got a dozen kids at a birthday party. And the first kid tells a story to the second kid. And the second kid tells a story, tells the same story to the third, and on and on and on and on and on. 
And then you get to the last one, and you compare the two stories, and they and they're they're nothing alike. You know, that you hope they're nothing alike. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be much of a game if they were. You know, but 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 the, the point is. Imagine playing the game operator or telephone, some people call it telephone. Imagine playing the game telephone or operator for 50 years and not with 12 kids who are from the same socioeconomic uh, 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 place in life, and, but, but with thousands of people who don't speak the same language. Who are who don't grow who didn't grow up in the same culture who have nothing in common? Imagine that. So, how, what do the stories look like when with these people that uh, in all of the major areas in the in in the Roman Empire, all the major cities in the Roman Empire, who are they get the stories and what are the stories like? And why do you tell the stories? You tell the stories obviously to get people to believe in Jesus. That's why I tell stories about Jesus, to get people to understand what Jesus stood for, how he calls us to, to do things, what he did in life. And what do you do with those? Well, if you really want them to, if you really want them to believe, you start talking about how he could walk on water. Remember that? When you were in the, in the army, remember? You had this sergeant that came in and, oh my God, he walks on water. Remember that? <laughs> Yeah, Very well. yeah, and 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 um, boy, she's such a great cook. She could multiply the loaves and fishes. You know, you tell stories like that, and the embellishments are just there. I mean, they're, you don't even have to work at it; they just come, don't they? Faith is propagated by people who heard the stories and passed them on. The reason they told the stories was for the express purpose of getting people to believe in Jesus. Yes, please. Uh, all this time and all these people who were hearing all these stories, and I'm sure some of them were learned who could write, I find it strange or whatever that nobody wrote something down. I would think that, oh, you told me the story, I'm going to write it, you know, a couple sentences, a paragraph, right. whatever. Uh, well, we have no extant uh Previous writings, uh, previous gospels, uh, previous to Mark, that made it into the canon. That is not to say they didn't exist. Uh, there are some. There are some scripture that, uh, of course, the, the all the Old Testament already existed, but there were some uh, some writings. Paul wrote. Paul's first writings were before the gospels. The very first ones, but only by about two or three years. Um, but uh, other than that, we don't we don't have any extant. Uh, there, there's nothing in the canon of scripture other than that that is previous to Mark's gospel. Well, there might have been something it was not happened, a. We don't have. It was not a written. It was not a written society. A written culture. Yes. It was an oral culture. So all these stories are, I mean, it probably didn't occur to very many people to write them down because the culture was a culture of, of oral tradition. We talked about the Pharisees and the oral tradition of Judaism. Well, Christianity was an outgrowth of Judaism. And so Christianity, as an outgrowth of Judaism, would necessarily be an oral tradition, uh, in its, certainly in its infancy, would be an oral tradition, um, and perhaps a lot of them had no way had no way of even being able to to spell what they needed to write down. Right, uh, these yeah. are, you had to be you had to be really really highly educated in order to write at all, and that's another thing. That's another thing. The, the, all of the gospel accounts indicate that Jesus's disciples were country people, fishermen, a tax collector. Here and there, you know, uh, were were country people. A kid of thirteen or fourteen years old. These were country people who did not probably read and write. In fact, in Acts, there is a there's a passage in Acts that says that Peter and John were illiterate. That's the the the, the real meaning of the Greek word that's in there. It usually doesn't show up like that. 
So what happens to the stories as they get passed on? They get changed. They get changed somehow. So, and we talked about the game of telephone. I call it operator. The purpose is to convert people to Christianity. That's the purpose of telling the story. So when you tell the story, you're going to put the very best face on it, aren't you? I mean, I don't stand up there in the, in the, uh, on Sunday morning and, and talk about, uh, you know, about Jesus going to the bathroom and he probably had bad days and, and I, I, don't, I don't say that but even though that's true I mean that's certainly true Jesus, Jesus came down from, from the mountain of transfiguration and he was, and he was carpet at his uh, that's, this is in the Bible <laughs> the bathroom part's not in the Bible but he was carpet at his disciples he was frustrated he'd been away to camp you know, and he'd seen Moses and, and Elijah, and he comes down the mountain, and the disciples are puzzling over this poor epileptic boy, and he says, how long do I have to put up with you people? Now, that doesn't sound much like gentle Jesus, meek and mild, does it? In fact, it's not, because, the, because I doubt that there was a gentle Jesus, meek and mild, to tell you the truth. I, I do not doubt that he was a grace-filled loving and forgiving person but he wasn't probably much more grace-filled and loving and giving than you are he had a special connection with god which made him separate from us (laughs) and he had a way of living the life of god in our flesh i'm still trying to understand what all that means and so are you i'm sure we're trying to understand what all that means, but we, but we take it as, a, as a, a foundational part of our faith. And we have to tell the stories of Jesus in order to get people to convert to Christianity. I, Bishop's not here, is he? I read something not long ago. The, the whole flap about the bathroom bill, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Somebody finally wrote my thoughts exactly. I don't care where they go to the bathroom. I just want them to wash their hands afterwards. <laughs> See, I, if, if, you, if you proclaim Jesus as Lord in your life, good. I would rather... If, 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 you, if you can't do that, I would rather you do something like tell people to be nice to each other. Stop fighting. Stop killing each other. Stop withholding food from hungry children. Why would we do that? S- start feeding the hungry. Don't put children... Don't rip children away from their parents and put them in cages. Wait a minute. Hold it. I'm not talking about what it means to be American. I'm talking about what it means to be human. Why don't we start treating each other like human beings? Once we get that down, let's talk about Jesus. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm for that. We have lost, so, we have so far lost the vision of Jesus that we almost don't have any time to talk about the Sermon on the Mount because we're too busy we're too busy burying teenagers who got shot last night. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is you know you talk about the game of telephone I I can't I can't even wrap my brain around Jesus sending out the 70 because I'm too busy talking about the 13-year-old girl who left her newborn baby in a dumpster. Wait a minute. Hold it. We, We should give up saying we're trying to be good. Let's just try not to be evil. I mean, that'd be a good start, don't you think? Let's give up evil for Lent. 
Let's give up evil for life. I'm sorry. I'm, now I'm preaching, and I'm and I should be teaching a there, teaching a class. Yes, sir. The, when you thing that says important stories are embellished just had me wildly thinking of the miracle of the loaves and fishes. Mm-hmm. Maybe it really started out with a hundred people. And <laughs> each story. Made it or half a dozen people. 5,000 5, people. Whoa, and by the time it got to Mark's ears, it was not only 5,000. Then there was another occasion when there was 4,000. Yeah, yeah. It by the time it got to Mark. That's a, that's a good point. Now, some people would say, well, in the go, excuse me, go ahead. Sherry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you had a you had a flash of hold it, wait a minute. Go ahead. That's the minutia. That doesn't doesn't matter whether it's a hundred or it's five thousand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. It's the meaning is what's important, right. not that it was a hundred or five thousand. You're right, of course, and and of course the the stories got to um, got to Luke and Matthew and John as well. I mean, of course, they had the same the same sources in some cases, and we'll talk about that in, in a little bit, but. <clears throat> But you're you're right. It doesn't matter whether it was five thousand or four thousand or a hundred. It doesn't matter if it was once or twice. What matters is that the the point of the of the whole story is that Jesus is that God, as shown to us in Jesus, will supply our needs if we but let him. All we've got to do is get out of the way. Some will say that uh, it was an oral culture, and oral cultures are, are more, uh, you know, they had to have things just right, and they had better memories. People had better memories back then, and that's, that's largely true. Uh, but without, without writings to check out factual nature of things, it was not possible. And so written cultures actually are more interested in, in getting things historically accurate than oral cultures are. Because in written cultures, there have, they have ways of checking whether things are, are factual or not. Oh, did I leave it too long? Jim, another point I would think would be the people who would have been writing in those times would be royalty and rulers. And they, they would. were practicing Christianity. Or members of their households, yeah, uh, so slaves or whoever who are educated. And I, think, I think what you said was just absolutely right, that it would not have occurred to people to write it down. I'm thinking of Native Americans who mm-hmm. could talk for days and days right. about their ancestors and all, and they, they didn't have any writing. No, and there still are no writings. Mm-hmm. There were, there's Very another few. point, too. Uh, Remember, this was an outlaw sect, a breakaway mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Judaism, mm-hmm. and there was a great deal of fear that uh, because there had been people mur- uh, martyred, and uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. that too, you didn't want to put your name to something. Yeah, well, a written document could be long. the 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 uh, government-backed persecutions uh, were just beginning when the when yeah, in fact that era. matter of fact that's why the why the Gospels were written in large part. Well, I was thinking more of the Sanhedrin and, and how they... Right, but the, Jews, but the Jews were not real comfortable with Christians, no. uh, except for Paul and people like Paul. Um, um, but the Roman-backed persecutions did not start until about the time... Well, Revelation was, was written to a persecuted church. Yes, sir. Of course, of course. So he would make sure. Okay, <laughs> okay. It was, it was embellished All right. in the right direction. Well, okay. <laughs> but God, God guides me too. Yeah, but he gave everybody free will to do what they thought. Absolutely. In the prayer book, we, we ask, uh, one of the questions in the catechism is, why do we call the scriptures holy? And the answer is, we call the scriptures holy because we believe that God inspired their human authors. So the human authors have the same 
uh, foibles and weaknesses as you and I do, and strengths and capabilities. You and I write what we write or say what we write or say what we say, uh, dependent on whether we're hungry or not, whether we are cold or not, whether we have enough money in the bank to pay the electric bill, uh, whether I got any last night. You know, all of those things go into make up what we co- how we communicate, you and I both, and the authors of the Gospels. They were subject to the same things. No doubt they believed what they heard as being worthy of being written down. Absolutely without doubt, because they did. Absolutely without doubt, they believed something about God and particularly something about Jesus because you could read that in, the, in, in what we have of their writings. But, but where they got the stories from and on what, and on what they based their, their writings is open to question. That's what I'm saying. We probably did not... Mark did not write Mark. We'll get to that next week. But Matthew did not write Matthew. And Luke, while someone associated with Luke probably wrote Luke, uh, and John was probably not written by John because he would have been about 120 years old by the time it was written. And so so, um, the attributions of the Gospels to specific people... uh, don't have anything really to say about who wrote them. Now, we, we call them Mark, and I talk about Mark uh, or Luke. Uh, you know, Luke says that Jesus sent out 70 people. Well, Luke actually said that Jesus sent out 72 people in, in, in the Greek. You can, you can interpret that 72 um, because it says 70 and 2 and 2. So, so that, but that may mean, what many people think is that that means sent out 70 people two by two. And that's, and, and, but it is ambiguous. It's ambiguous. Even in the Greek, it's ambiguous. Greek, which usually is a pretty precise language, is, is ambiguous. Okay. All right. Let's mush on. So basically you're saying that the, the writings of Mark is what, People took from his sayings and wrote it down themselves. That whoever wrote Mark's gospel took the sayings and the stories that they heard. Whoever that was took the, st- the sayings and the stories that they heard, put them in an order that made sense to them. And then credited them. To and then credited them. And, and pro- but probably got them from some other source. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to get them from some other source. Because the writer wasn't wasn't an eyewitness. Yeah. These were not eyewitnesses that wrote these gospels. Here's something here's some things we can say about the gospels. All four gospels were written anonymously. That is to say that none of the gospels said I Mark, I Luke did so and so and so and so. Or and and so none of them claims to be written by any particular person. They were all written by somebody obviously, but but they were all four written anonymous, un, anonymously. The attributions to two of Jesus' disciples and two friends of, of followers of Jesus, uh, of course, Matthew and John were, were Jesus' disciples. Matthew was a tax collector and John was, was a youngster. He was the son of James, uh, I mean, the, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee. So John Zebedee and Matthew Levi were the were the two disciples for which these things were named, and then the two uh, uh, companions. One was Mark, John Mark, who was known to be a uh, the secretary of the apostle Peter, and then Luke, who was uh, who is reputed to have been a uh, a companion of of the apostle Paul. But those attributions did not come until almost a century, until about a century after uh, Mark wrote. Go ahead. Going back when the original Gospels were all written in Greek? Yes. 
all of them were written in Greek. And that would make sense because the educated people in the Roman Empire all wrote and spoke in Greek. That, that would make sense. Remember when the Romans took over, everything was going fine so they, did, they didn't mess with it. They, they did not mess with the Greek culture. That's why in the Bible it says both Jews and Greeks. Because there were Jews and then there was everybody else which they call, who they called Greeks. They called them Greeks because they spoke Greek. But they weren't Greek. The people from Greek are Greek. See, this, these are distinctions that you and I make because we live in the 21st century. But you, I mean, we can't say that we can't say that Chris Mays is Greek. He's not Greek. He's American. We know that. He lives here. He was born here. Blah, 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 blah. But it may be his Greek ancestry. But he does have Greek ancestry. But then we, ha- we have to say he has Greek ancestry. You know, it's, it's not like he's Greek. He's not Greek. He's sitting right here. It's a Sunday morning at 10 minutes to 10. He's sitting in America. Back then, the, the, the Jews, the, the Jews said Jews and everybody else. There were two kinds of people. There's Jews and then there's everybody else. Right. Okay. Why, uh, reason, oh, reasons for doubting these attributions. Well, first of all, they were written in languages that none of the, none of the disciples knew. They were written in Greek. None of the disciples spoke Greek. The only apostle that spoke Greek was Paul. The only one. And he wrote in Greek. And he, re- he was a real person. Uh, they were not written by lower class uneducated people who were all of who, th- that was the only kind of disciples that Jesus had. When we look in there and listen to him calling the disciples and all that kind of stuff, he wasn't calling people from the, from the academies and the, and, the, uh, and, the, and the government. He was calling people in, out of the marketplace or, or the workplace. Uh, they were not written in the first person. Surely, if Sherry was a, dis, a, a an eyewitness, she would have said, "Then we went to Capernaum and did so and so, and then I, and then we went to the house of Peter." Surely, they would. There would be at least one reference in there, and there are none. No references. It's more like a biography as opposed to autobiography. Well, more like a biography than an autobiography. Yeah. Okay, then who wrote who wrote them? Well, they were educated people. The 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 styling and the and the the prose and all that kind of stuff means that they are educated people. Some more highly educated than others. You can tell that Paul was far more highly educated than Mark when you read the Greek. You can just you can just tell because the prose is is smoother and Mark has a few disjuncts here and there. Uh, who had received the stories and wrote some of them down. Gospel accounts preserve stories that had been changed. We, we have to assume that. All right. Is there any truth, a proof of the stories being changed? Yes, of course there is. In... Um, There are two Gospels. Well, let's just read. Oh, we don't have much time. There are two Gospels that tell us when Jesus died. Mark's Gospel, the Gospel according to Mark, and the Gospel according to John. Now, in order to understand this, you've got to remember, in order to understand what I'm going to say, you've got to remember uh, something. And that is the way of determining time according to the Jews. Now, in Genesis, in Genesis, you remember God creates something and there was evening and there was morning one day. Right? You with me? And so in Jesus' day, the daylight is here and the moon the dark is here that's a moon not the banana okay so so here's 12 noon here's midnight for you and me a day starts right here 
and ends right there. It is day until, I mean, it's night until about 6 o'clock in the morning. You go past noon, 6 o'clock at night, and then it's night again, and that's the end of the day. For the Jews, the day begins here. When the sun goes down is when the day begins, and it goes all the way until the next day when the sun goes down. That's the day. So here is, here it's, 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 let's say this is Monday. Well, when the sun goes down on Monday, now it's Tuesday, in the, according to Jewish reckoning. And it's Tuesday all the way until here when it becomes Wednesday, right? You, you with me on this? Yes, sir. You understand? Okay. That's the way of, of, of reckoning time. For the Jews. So, when did Jesus die? All four Gospels uh, record Jesus' death. Uh, two of them give us very specific um, indications about when Jesus died. According to Mark, Jesus' disciples come and ask him, Where would you like for us to prepare the Passover meal? And he gives them their instructions, and they go off and do that. And then that night, they actually eat the Passover meal. P.M., Passover meal. So this is the day, so the day of Passover begins right here and goes all night long, and then all the next day until the sun goes down. That's the day of Passover. And when Jesus goes out from this Passover meal in Mark's, in Mark's gospel, Jesus goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane, GG, Garden of Gethsemane. He is approached by the uh, soldiers of the temple police, and he is arrested. He spends the night in jail. J-N, Jesus in jail. He spends the night in jail. He is tried by uh, the Sanhedrin. They take him to Pilate in the early morning. Then Pilate, learning that uh, Herod is in town, sends him to Herod. who sends him back to Pilate, who orders him to be crucified. And it's very plain. In Mark, he says, this was at the sixth hour, which is 9 a.m. He was crucified at 9 a.m. on the day of Passover. That's according to Mark. Okay? John has a little bit different story. Whereas this meal in Mark was, was a, a big part of Jesus' uh, ministry. He gives, the, he gives the, uh, the bread and the wine of the Passover meal new meaning. This is my body. This is my blood. Uh, this is a big deal in Mark's gospel also in Luke and, and Matthew, but they don't, have this, they don't have the specificity that this one does. Okay, let's look at John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, uh, this is, this, in Mark, this is the day of Passover. Don't waste that. I want to take a photograph of it. All right. Okay. This is the day of Passover, starting here and going to here. In John's Gospel, John is also very, very specific. They do have a meal. They do, uh, but there's no indication that it is a Passover meal. He does not, Jesus does not uh, take the bread and the wine and give them new meaning. He never talks about Passover. In fact, in, 
one of the Gospels, Jesus says, how I have longed to eat this Passover meal with you. Not in John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, Jesus dies. Uh, John says, they crucified Jesus. He has a meal. He has a meal. He spends the night in jail. He goes before Pilate, goes before Herod, and he goes back before Pilate. And he is crucified. And John tells us exactly when this happened. He says, it, and it was at 12 o'clock noon on the day of preparation. According to John, Jesus died at 12 o'clock noon on the day of preparation. What is the day of preparation? The day of preparation is the day when the, when the disciples went to prepare the feast. Right? Remember, remember that? Well, on the, for the Passover, all of the lambs, all the Passover lambs, well, let's don't do it there, let's do it here. All the Passover lambs are slaughtered at 12 o'clock noon in the temple. That's when the mass slaughter takes us, starts at 12 noon. They're slaughtered. They are prepared. Uh, they, the, the meal is prepared here. And then the meal takes place here. Well, how could, how could Jesus be... How could Jesus have died on the day of preparation? Actually, we should have done it here. If this is when the Passover is, and John says he died at 12 o'clock noon on the day of preparation, which would have been this day. I did that. Because it was on the day of preparation, how could that be? Jesus lived through that day. He ate the Passover meal, according to Mark. And it was the next day when Jesus died. How did this? How do you reconcile this? Well, you probably can't. I mean, not and remain a thinking human being. But look at what look at what happens here. There is one gospel and only one gospel that refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. Does John have a reason to have Jesus killed on the, uh, crucified the very moment that the Passover lambs are killed? Of course he does. He has a reason to put that in there, doesn't he? Does it matter a great deal? Well, probably not in the eternal uh, thing, uh, scheme of things. But John has a reason. The writer of John's gospel has a reason for Jesus to die at noon on the day of preparation. Day of preparation, day of Passover. When did Jesus die? Well, we don't know. But the stories, by the time the story got to John, from Mark, between John and Mark, John, either John changed it or somebody changed it between Mark and John, and John had it, had it this way. John is the one who's, and we'll see this when we, when we study John's gospel. John is the one who from the very get-go has us knowing that Jesus is God made man. No messianic secret here. No Jesus telling people, don't tell anybody. When, they, when, when, uh, when Peter says, uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus sternly told them not to tell anyone. Where? In Mark's gospel. Yeah, not in John's gospel. In John's gospel, Peter, uh, Jesus would have done handsprings and said, wow, you got it. Congratulations. Of course, Peter screwed it up there immediately. You know, he said, uh, he said, I have to go and die in Jerusalem. And and Peter says, well, no, you're not going to go die in Jerusalem. And he rebuked Jesus. Jesus turns around and rebukes him and says, and, and says you don't understand. This is all part of what has to happen. 
So are the stories changed? Of course they're changed. Another one. Uh, it's pretty simple. i got to go, but it's pretty simple. Where was Jesus born? I'm, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. In Bethlehem. Where was Mary and Joseph's hometown? If you read Luke, it's Nazareth. If you read Matthew, no, if you read Matthew, it's Nazareth. Nazareth. If you read Luke, it's Bethlehem. Well, they were like originally from Bethlehem. And then they went, see, they were of that particular tribe. That, they, that was Joseph's ancestral home, but that's not where they lived. No, but that, that's true. You know, people say, you know, I was born in Dallas. So that's my. Yeah, but where do they live? Where, where was their hometown? If you live in... So which is my hometown? Well, I don't know. You can go from one in about... You can go from one in about four hours today. Yeah. Uh, not several days. So... Well, in, in one of the Gospels, in one of the Gospels, they went to, uh, to Bethlehem to pay taxes. In one of the in the in the other and then and then they when they wanted to go back, uh, I'm sorry, they lived in Nazareth. They went to Bethlehem to pay taxes. In another gospel, they just lived in Bethlehem. They went down into Egypt, and when they came back to Bethlehem, the rulers were worse than, and so they relocated to Nazareth. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. We, I mean, that's that's common among all the gospels. But what was Mary and Joseph's hometown? In one gospel it's Bethlehem, in another it's Nazareth. Okay, we're done. Next week we will read Mark. Please take uh, an hour this week sometime and read Mark's gospel. Just read it through so that, so that you kind of get an idea of, of uh, so when I refer to things next week I won't have to say, okay, now look in this passage and look in that passage. Very good. All right? Thank you. Thank you.